Hey guys, Luke Five Two Eight Theory here, and welcome to episode one of my tutorial series. So in this episode, I am going to be explaining how to get a world from Minecraft into Cinema 4D and how to make it look nice and all. So in this tutorial series, I'm going to be showing you how to make renders and animations, kind of like how I do. Of course, you will still need experience and everything. You won't immediately be able to animate as good as all the amazing animators out there because it takes a lot of experience etc to get started in cinema 4d you of course need cinema 4d now cinema 4d costs a lot of money so i'd recommend getting a correct version i'm not going to provide a link to that because one i don't have one and two it's officially illegal so i'm not going to put the link in the description but there's plenty ways to get them so then i'm gonna leave that to you so when you're in Cinema 4D, you of course can't just like open Minecraft and put it in here. You're going to need a software called Mineways. So you're going to want to go to Google and type in my Mineways. Mineways, real-time rendering. So here you'll see this little thingy. So you're going to want to click on Download Mineways for Windows, or if you have Mac, you go to that one. There we go. So once you open it, you have mine ways. This is all you need. So I'm quick. But I already have this installed, so I don't actually need to use this one. Okay. So once you have mine ways open, you'll have this. All right. So once you've opened mine ways, you're going to want to click mine ways, file, and then here you can find all of your worlds, or you go to open and you click the level dot file. I'm not sure if I have anything around the world here. Don't think I do. But you can also just move them into your world folder. So, so you're going to want to find the world that you're currently using. Or at least that you want to use. So hold on, let me quickly find one. So I'll go with my own map. So you go here and you see this little top view. Here you'll be able to select what part you want to get. So, you're going to want to go to the first corner. In this case, I'll be, I'll be rendering out this little house. So you're going to want to hold down right click and move all the way to the other corner. Here we will ask something, you just click on the yes, it makes it easier. So here you can change the bottom. If I change this to four, the entire floor will be gone. And when two, this entire grass here will stay. This is kind of like to every layer here is one block so whenever moving this up the bottom will raise rise but I'll I'll leave it at two the max height is to remove like roofs etc which you see right here so once you're done you're going to want to export for rendering I'll quickly make a little tutorial map here just save here course give it a name okay so here make sure to change this to a thousand millimeters so otherwise your world will be too small for the characters all right there we go now rendered so you're going to want to go to file open and go to your little folder with the world and click on this 3d object make sure that this is on one meter and it just got imported there we go, it doesn't take long unless it's really big. So right now, if you render it out, it looks very, very boring and definitely not like a Minecraft world. So what you're going to want to do is click on one of these and just do Ctrl A. It selects all of them. Turn off Reflectance and enable Alpha. You're going to want to go to Color. And this little three dots. And select the RGBA. Make sure to go to here. And press none if you don't do so your textures will be very very blurry and that's of course not what you want then you go to alpha press the three dots and go with the alpha and click here on none again this is to make the transparency and everything now right now so as you can see right now we have this little everything is textured and everything well of course it doesn't look amazing what I always do, and which I really re highly recommend, is changing the glowstone. 
as you can see, when you click on an object, it gives this little yellow outline. So click on the glowstone and grab the glowstone texture. Enable glow and luminance. Right now they will turn white. This is because this doesn't have a texture yet. Go here again, get the RGBA and change this to none. Now this, now however dark it will be, this will always be lighted. Right now, once we render it out, the glow is a little bit weird. So what you want to go to here and change this to 40. You can always customize this yourself till you like it. This will make the inner strength stronger. Say like I go to 400. This part will be a whole lot brighter. And say I change this to 5000. This is way too much, of course. The outside will be a lot brighter. This is to make the range. Say I change this to 100. The glow will be a lot further. So don't change everything too much. But yeah, this should be good. Now if you want to make everything look even a little bit more fancier. You can always change this to like a thousand. Which is what I do. And it gives... Uh, no, 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 no. And once we render this out, it gives this like a little bit more light. Which just makes everything look a bit more fancy. Now, right now everything looks very, very boring and unrealistic, of course. So what you're going to want to do at first is get a light. A light is very, very important in the scene because otherwise there's no lighting and no shadows. So what you're going to do is grab a light, drag it all the way up far away enough so it like don't put it in here because then it won't actually act like a sun so you can put it kind of like here change the color a little bit to yellow you can do that by just clicking on the color and then clicking OK now here is going to be a choice of what you like the most you can go with two kinds of shaders you can go with hard, change this to 85, and when rendering it out, you see it's completely like it has no like, fall off. If you change this to soft, it doesn't actually show anything. Well, this that's also the reason why I never use soft. I always use hard because it just I, I personally prefer it. it. Looks a bit more nicer. But still, like, these little edges right here, they don't look special. Things like, like, right here are completely dark. Which is why you'll need render settings. Go to the little button right here. And you're going to want to change this. The resolution of your animation. Or render. The standard thing is 720p. You can also go with 1920, 1080 and of course much higher and higher. Although I will prefer my render settings at 720p. Now here depends if you're going to animate or make a render. When rendering a picture, you're going to want to stick with current frame. If an animation, you're going to want to go with all frames or manual, where you can select how many you want. I usually just go with all frames. So right here, when animating, when, when rendering an animation, I'd go with a vibe movie, unless it's really long. And it's best to just go with PNG and you and get a software like Sony Vegas that can import them, that can import pictures to actual videos. Right here, you can choose where you want your video or picture to be. I'll just go with here and I'll, I'll just abuse my keyboard. And there we go. All right. So you go multi-pass. You don't really need to pay attention to that. Here, I'll go with best. And 2x2, two two. this makes every pixel a little bit more smoother, it just makes it look a little bit better. With options, I'll go. I'll change this to 0, 6, 2, 6. And turn off blurriness. These things just make the render, render time a lot longer, but they don't actually do anything. These two things you can completely ignore. And the object glow comes with a little glow on the blocks. Then, you definitely want ambient occlusion. 
turn on evaluate with transparency in here you can kind of choose your settings i usually go with like 1 to 80 and now if i render it out you'll see that these corners have like this little darkness to it just makes every block and corner just make it a bit more smoother then you're going to want global illumination these two are the most important you, together they're really really they take a lot of time off your render but without your animation will look bad so here i'll go with low here low and whenever an anime and change this to 30. Yeah, it's not really high but it definitely does the job so when i'm rendering it out now you see that everything becomes a little bit more darker don't worry too much about this render time for me it's a little bit slow because one my pc isn't too great and two i'm recording at the moment and now as you can see everything is a lot brighter and just looks a whole lot better also if you re remember correctly this part was completely black and you couldn't see anything now once our render is completely there you should be able to see wait for it wait for it Look, now you do actually see stuff. It just makes everything like a bit more brighter. Then also what I would recommend is using glow. Change this to 3, this to 8. And now if I render a bit out. No, no. Now if I render a bit out. What glow does is pretty much when you're completely rendered, it just gives this like a little bit more of a glow. Every white spot gets a little bit more brighter and just makes everything look a bit nicer. So now we're done with render settings and our scene is pretty much close to being finished. Now of course like you have chests right here which you might want to replace manually. I also do that with glass because I don't really prefer the way glass looks. Also with lights you want to be careful with how many lights you use because lights do take a lot of render time. Every light for me usually takes like an extra 30 seconds or something so you're gonna want to be careful with how many you use and what i usually do is grab all of the stuff because i like organizing everything right click and go to group objects now usually when you double click you can change this to world and then here you have everything so select all of this again by clicking the first one and then the last one we're holding shift and left clicking right click add to new layer also go down here right click add to layer layer change this click on here and click on here the, these two little things make it so that they don't actually show up which means that this is just like a lot more empty the lock makes it so that you can't actually press on the stuff which is really handy right now when we render the sky though it's complete black look it's completely black this is of course not what you want so now there's two ways to do this you can or use a background or use a sky object or use a physical sky actually i usually use the sky with renders to like pictures i'd go with background because it's a lot easier but with animation sky is usually easier now you want to maybe get a texture, I don't actually have textures, which is the problem with me, but... So that's why I can't really explain too much about this, but you just make a texture by double clicking. Disabling reflectance and making like a little blue color. And you can just drag it on here and you have your sky. Now because I have the Anishwai rig, you could go, I can go right here and just search up sky. And there's already a sky preset ready for me. It just makes it look like this. Now say I render it again, you'd see that stuff is a bit more blue now. It's because a sky object also lights the air. Now I still personally don't really like how is how this looks, which is why I always add an environment. I usually don't mess around with this, but click on enable fog. Now don't get scared that everything's so white. You can easily just move this like to 7. And it's like a bit further away. Now there's two now there's three colors you can usually choose between. A good guy like go for this color. 
which gives it like a bit more of a warm feeling. You can go with blue, which gives it more of a cold feeling. And purple gives it more of a scary night feel. I usually go with, with kind of a yellowish. Well, here's an important part. Make sure to click on this and check it. Because if you don't, the sky will be completely like this color. Which is kind of ugly. So that's why I usually do this and then it, that's not a problem anymore. So well, this is pretty much your entire set completely finished. There's of course water etc. And sugar cane and flowers that you can put in manually. But, for, but just as a starter animo animator, this is pretty much all you need to get started. So, before, before we actually end up, you're going to want to go to save. And you save it where you want to save it. And there you go, you should be all good. So uh, in the next episode I'll be showing you how to make characters by making them 3D etc. So yeah, if you want to see episode 2 of this tutorial series make sure to leave a like. If there's specific something that you want me to review or like show you how to do, then make sure to leave it in the comments and I'll see you all next time. Bye!